Hello everyone, it's Ashley with Amare. So today we are going to talk about chin lipo. Um, tips and procedure, We're gonna, I'm just gonna dive right in. All right, so for those of you listening on the podcast, thank you for joining. Um, follow us over on Instagram and YouTube to watch the actual video. Um, for those of you on Instagram, if you don't wanna watch my face for a whole like 20 to 30 minutes, jump on over to the podcast, Anchor and Spotify, um, and Google, I believe, all the podcast platforms. Um, anyways, so, chin lipo. What is it? Why do we get it done? So, chin lipo is exactly that. It's liposuction to the underneath of your chin, sometimes to the neck. I know you guys on the podcast cannot see me, but the neck area, anywhere from collarbone and up, um, and then under the chin, from like the tip of your chin all the way back to your ears. So that's chin lipo. Um, there are a lot of places that do it. There are also a lot of doctors who won't do it. So make sure if you're going to get chin lipo, you're going to a doctor who's done it like a million times before and knows what they're doing. I know Sonabello and Elite um, both do chin lipo. I know a lot of doctors that do chin lipo and I know a lot of doctors that do chin lipo not very well. It's kind of one of those things they just do. I am going to record another video and it's gonna go up in the next couple weeks about how to pick a surgery for your surgery guys just because your surgeon or the surgeon you pick can do something doesn't mean they should um, or doesn't mean they're skilled enough in it there are certain surgeons who are very skilled in vaser certain surgeons who are like specialized in breast dogs and breast implants and all of that stuff reconstruction certain ones who just do BBLs certain ones who are really good at high definition lipo suction which is like ab etching and stuff like that so just because a surgeon does something um they have a specialty in something else so pick somebody that specializes in chin lipo that you've seen great results with that can really talk to you about what they're gonna do um because there are a lot of times where it goes wrong they either do not enough or they do too much now when you're doing chin and neck lipo it is a very sensitive area you will bruise like crazy we'll get to that in a second but it's a very sensitive area and it's very thin skin so you want to make sure you have somebody that's doing the lipo that understands the skin and the tissue in that area it is not like regular lipo to your stomach or your arms or your thighs the tissue is a little bit different the fat's a little bit different your skin's going to heal a little bit different now, let's jump into the healing part of it, which no one talks about. Your surgeon doesn't tell you that you're healing from chin lipo. It's going to be different than you're healing from regular body lipo, which is different from arm lipo, which is different from thigh lipo. So I'll do videos on those later. But again, chin lipo healing is very different than regular liposuction on your body because, again, the skin is different and the tissue is different. So diving into this, one it's going to take a little longer to heal that chin lipo area because the skin is a lot thinner. Two, your garment situation, which we're going to get into in a second. Three, your bruising. It's going to be a lot more apparent because it's your face, your neck, and your chin that you look at a lot more. Four, the soreness. You are going to have a lot more soreness on your chin and neck lipo area. Um, it is an area that moves a lot when you breathe. It moves a lot when you talk, when you chew, when you swallow. So you're going to feel it quite a bit more. Um, and then you know, all of the other normal lipo things that can happen. Fibrosis, you're very, very prone to fibrosis in that area, and that has something to do with the garment. So, let's break it down. Um, bruising, like we said, you're gonna bruise a lot more. It's a very thin-skinned area, so it's not that you're gonna bruise more, you're gonna see it more. You're gonna notice it more, because it's your chin and your neck, number one. Number two, that skin is thinner, so they're gonna be more apparent. Um, and number three, it's a very sensitive area, and it's a very small area. Now, generally, when they do chin and neck lipo, it's not weight loss. No lipo is weight loss. Point blank. So, yes, the appearance is going to look smaller, but if you have like a lot under there, it's not going to be like major weight loss to your neck and chin. If you've got like a really bad double chin or a really bad fat on your neck, it's going to help sculpt and give your face a shape. So, I know again, podcast listeners, you guys can't see this, but if you look at my jawline, I have a very defined jawline. And then under here, is pretty flat. You can see this contour. You can see the muscles in my neck, my SCM. You can see all the muscles on the side of my neck. You can see my muscles flex when I talk. Chin lipo and neck lipo is meant to accentuate those muscles. So they're meant to bring the definition out so that you can see all of that and have some curve and some contour to your jaw, have some curve and some contour to your neck. 
That's what Chin Lipo is meant for. It's to give you that curve, to give you all of those little contours to that area. So when you guys go in and you're like, oh, well, I can see those lines down, I can see everything, but I still look like I have a, you know, a chubby chin, well, again, there's only so much they can do. So chin lipo is sculpting. Now, again, same thing. Like I said, bruising, it's a very sensitive area. You use it to talk a lot. You'll use it to move a lot. So bruising is going to be a thing. Now, the garment for chin lipo. Guys, every single chin lipo garment will cut into you. First of all, you should not be wrenching that thing against your face. That's not how that works. I know a lot of people that get those garments from their doctors, the, the ones that come around your neck and have a Velcro. They have a Velcro that comes around the back of your head and a Velcro that comes around the top of your head and they're squeezing the crap out of it. That is a no-no. Having a garment that is too tight around your chin lipo area will cause fibrosis. If you guys are having knots and lumps and bumps in your chin lipo and neck lipo area, put the garment on and trace where the seams of the garment are because it's coming from the garment being too tight. It's cutting into you and it's becoming a tourniquet trapping swelling rather than holding your swelling, keeping it down. It's bunching it up in one area. Now, every chin and neck lipo garment is made the same way. It doesn't matter which one you get, but what? does matter is that you have correct lipo foams. So the ones that your doctor will give you will be either memory foam or they will be some sort of like, I don't know, like sponge almost, um, or they'll be really like, they just, they feel really itchy. They're not the best, um, which is why we have the Amari lipo foams, which are fully machine washable. Now, the thing with that, it is on your face and it is on your neck. 24 7. You need to be washing it. Our lipo foams are machine washable and you're going to cut them into strips. So basically, you're going to either put your garment on or lay it out on the table and look at where the seams are. And you want to cut strips of foams to line the seams of your garment. So under the chin, from like right where your chin and your neck meet to your chin, you want that foam sticking out maybe like a, like a couple centimeters from the garment itself so that you have a little bit of extra room so that foam is covering the seam so the seam isn't cutting into you anymore so from the bottom of your the top of your neck right here to where your chin is you want a nice thick strip that comes all the way around to your ears because a lot of times the stitches and the points for the cannula entry is by your ears so you want to make sure that's covered because what I see a lot of times is once you guys heal that scar is really thick and it's like a bubble in there because swelling's been trapped in it because of the seams of the garment. So you want to make sure that that lipo foam, the Amari lipo foams, when you cut them, they cover right where your incision points are by your ears. Around your neck, you want one nice big thick piece that covers again that entire band that goes around your neck all the way to almost the back of your neck. So you're creating one big buffer with the lipo foam to push the garment away from you but keep that same compression ratio and those compression measurements to make sure that you are getting adequate compression. Now, same thing with every other God bless the garment. You should be wearing it 24 seven. If it is unbearable and it's not comfortable, then you're not gonna wear it 24 seven. So adding those machine washable Amari lipo foams and cutting them into strips, you're gonna have like a couple different pieces to change out so you're not washing them every day and it's gonna buffer your garment so you're not squeezing crap out of yourself and cutting into you with the garment. So um, that being said, you guys need to be wearing your garment. How long? Until you have zero swelling, until you have zero hardness, until you have zero fibrosis. So that could be anywhere from four weeks to six weeks to eight weeks, depending on what it is. Now, let's just make something very clear. Just because you had surgery four weeks ago, if you weren't doing any of this before this point, you are now starting at day one. Four weeks ago doesn't count if you have all this fibrosis and you're now finding this video and you're now putting the MRI lipo foams in and you're now taking care of your swelling. None of that matters until you actually start taking care of it, which is why I say it can take way longer than four or six weeks. It can take longer than three months because if you're not actively taking care of it, it's going to get worse. Fibrosis, those hard, hard little things, the lumps and stuff that you get after chin lipo where it feels like hard and thick and like you want to stretch it, but it won't stretch. That is lymph fluid that because of the garment trapping it against you and inside of you has become hard and thick and congealed. The lipo foams that we sell turn the fibrosis back to its original liquid state. Then you need to go get proper manual lymphatic drainage massages to your chin and neck and face to get all of that fluid to drain back into your body and then you pee it out. So 
again, I know we have this constant struggle with finding MLD practitioners, proper manual lymphatic drainage water practitioners. If you need help with that, um, set up a virtual with me. If you need help with the foams and your garment for your lipo and for your chin and stuff like that, you can set up a virtual. I can help you with that too. Everything I just explained about cutting the strips, I can actually do it with you to make sure that it fits right for the garment that you have. Um, we can do all of that together. But Garment and foams, number one thing, 24-7 until you have zero hardness and all your swelling is starting to resolve. The bruising, bruising will get trapped in your fibrosis. I have seen discoloration and bruising with chin lipo for three months. And then once we start resolving the fibrosis, you get circulation back. Now, talking about the bruising. There is a difference between discoloration from fibrosis where your skin is like pink um, or like purple and red, but not actually bruised. That is the fibrosis cutting off circulation just beneath your skin. When you do this, when you like run your finger down your neck, if your skin is changing colors, you're having circulation issues because of the fibrosis. When you have a bruise, right? Let's say you stub your toe. Or let's say you like bump into something on your leg, right? When you have a bruise and you run your finger over the bruise, you just press and like run your finger across the bruise. That bruise doesn't change colors. That skin doesn't go white to pink to purple. It just stays the bruised color because that's a true bruise. When you have this coloration due to the fibrosis being hard, it's because your skin's not getting enough circulation. So the second thing that we use is the post-op extra strength cream that is on the Amare post-op shop. And you're going to rub with that cream three times a day to get the circulation to come back to your neck and to your skin to get the fibrosis to start breaking down along with using the foams 24 seven. So you're gonna dip your hands in it and you're just going to with only fingertips you're not digging just fingertips rub 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 doesn't matter circular motions it doesn't matter which direction because it's the whole area so you're just gonna rub it's easiest to do if you're laying down or if you put your head back against the chair like this and rub when it's relaxed see how my skin is moving that's what you want you want skin movement in this area with that post-op cream so lots of skin movement and you're rubbing until it's bone dry and you're not putting on a thick layer because you're doing it three times a day so one the herbs in there are going to help with the discoloration and the circulation two this rubbing with that specific cream is going to help break down your fibrosis and bring back circulation as well um and number three the pain that you're feeling and the soreness and the stiffness, the herbs in that post-op extra strength cream that we have will help take care of the numbness, the tingling, everything that you're feeling, all that discoloration, all the soreness and the stiffness. It'll help bring all of that back because the herbs are getting in there. So you want to make sure you're doing all of it three times a day with that extra strength post-op cream and wearing your Amari Lipo Foams 24-7 with your garment, um, whatever fin or chin or face garment that is, um, on top of drinking a gallon of water a day. You guys need to be hydrated. Duh. Come on now. Hello. Number one, to plump up your lymphatic system and get that hardness to get back to being soft and squishy swelling. Uh, and number two, the swallowing action helps to stimulate your lymphatic system. So the more water you drink, the better. The worst thing to try and do with fibrosis is stretch it. You don't want to like pull and stretch. That fibrosis, I have tons of videos and podcasts on fibrosis. That fibrosis is like spider webs all along your neck, sticking to everything, holding you in place. The worst thing you can do is try to stretch that. Don't stretch it. Start doing like some neck rolls. Start doing some shoulder rolls. Get some circulation back in there. Start using the Amari post-op cream um, or the post-op extra strength cream. Start using the Amari lipo foams. Get your garment to fit properly and start getting some circulation and some gentle movement in that whole neck and chin area. Don't stretch it. You're just going to be pulling on fibrosis. It's not going to help. It's going to make you more sore and piss off all that tissue. So water, post-op extra strength cream, Amari lipo foams and rigging your garment with those foams to make sure that everything is moving properly. Okay, so now bruising we talked about, stiffness, pain, soreness, fibrosis, all of that. The other thing that is a real pain in the butt, um, you guys shouldn't be having salt. I say it a lot in all my videos, I mentioned it a little bit, but salt will make your fibrosis worse. No salt. The end, that is non-negotiable. Caffeine will also do the same thing. It'll dehydrate you and dry you out and make all of this a lot tougher. Um, biggest complaints that I hear about chin lipo is that even if there's no fibrosis with your amount of swelling, and I mean, I usually don't see chin lipo people until about their two month, three month, six month, eight month, a year, um, because your doctor tells you, oh, it'll go down, oh, it'll go down, oh, it'll go down, and then guess what? 
six months later, a year later, you're not, it hasn't gone down. And you find me and you're like, okay, my chin looks worse. My neck looks worse than it did a year ago. My doctor said to wait and it didn't happen. So now I'm doing other things to fix it. So that swelling will stay trapped in there if you don't take care of it. Um, like I said, the biggest thing that I hear is my chin and my neck don't look any different. And then I say, well, how long did you wear your garment for? And were you wearing it religiously? And they were like, no, because it was choking me or I feel claustrophobic. So then we get you on the no salt, the gallon of water, the post-op cream and the MRI lipofoams and it starts to resolve. But guys, that can stay in there forever. That can stay in there for years, and I've seen it for years. Um, and even if you can't get proper MLD massages for somebody who specializes in like a head, neck, and face protocol like I do, or who's, you know, well-versed in this post-op stuff as far as chin liposuction, using that post-op cream is still giving you that lymphatic movement. Moving your skin on your neck with that post-op cream is going to give you that lymphatic movement. Yes, it's not going to be as powerful and as targeted as if you were coming to see me or if we found you somebody that was doing it, but it's still going to make a difference and it's still going to help. So how long does it take for it to reverse? The rule of thumb with fibrosis is it's twice as long as you've had it for. So if you've had it for three months, expect six months. Now, if you're on the MRI protocol, it's usually not. It's usually less than that. But just, you know, for the sake of planning, expect six months. If you've had it for three weeks, expect six weeks or a little bit longer just to push the timeline out a little bit. But it's usually double the amount of time that you've had the fibrosis for is what it takes to get rid of it. Because again, or that fibrosis, especially in your neck and chin area, we have to get that back to being swelling and then we have to get that swelling out of your body. It's got to process through your body and then you got to pee it out. So that's generally how long that takes. Um, with <laughs> the pain from chin lipo, with recovery, as far as like how long you need to be out of work for, I know a lot of surgeons will say, oh, it'll, it'll be quick. You'll you need like a month. You're going to be fine. Or you'll need like a week. You're going to be okay. Yes, you can, but guys, it's your face and it's your neck and you want to make sure that it looks good and you want to take the time to make sure that it heals right. So as far as, okay, I'm getting chin lipo, how long should I wait or how long should I be out of work? Um, I usually say six weeks just to make sure that we do get everything out, that you're presentable, that you're FaceTime ready, that you're Zoom ready, that you're back in, you know, to be out in public and seen with people because you should be wearing that garment 24-7. Yes, at some point you can scale down to just at night or just when you're home, but it's gonna make everything take a lot longer as far as getting rid of fibrosis, getting rid of swelling, making sure you heal, all of that. Now, last little tidbit I'm going to say, skin retraction. You guys will get chin lipo done, neck lipo done, you will have fibrosis for three months. It'll be really, really hard and look terrible and be all discolored. Once the discoloration goes away, as the fibrosis breaks up and your skin heals properly and gets circulation and everything back, um, it then takes another four weeks, three to four weeks, for your skin to fully, like, re not reattach, but yes, drape, as they say, skin draping after lipo, drape back to its normal baseline. So my skin, when I move, is nice and tight and nice and taut. Um, there are a lot of surgeons that will do vaser skin tightening with the liposuction or some sort of skin tightening for under here with the liposuction that makes you take longer to heal because again first of all we have to get all the fibrosis to go back to swelling so you're going to poof up and then as we get the swelling out with mld you're going to have you know a little bit of skin that hasn't reattached yet and looks kind of like flabby almost because it's been in a garment and it's been pushed away from its baseline with swelling with fibrosis it hasn't been able to get to that tissue and reattach yet so expect after all of your swelling is gone and all of your fibrosis is gone and everything's completely healed for it to take another three to four weeks for your skin to attach properly and redrape and get nice and tight and taut again and heal properly to where it's like nice skin that's the kind of thick that you can like touch and has a little bit of muscle tone to it rather than just being like squishy flabby skin um so that with any lipo is is a normal process that happens afterwards that usually happens around month two and three in regular body lipo as long as we have no swelling no fibrosis generally it's month two and three where the skin redraping happenings ha happenings happens and your skin starts to come back to that new baseline of tissue um same thing like i said with the neck and chin you know only difference is when you have a lot of fibrosis it's going to take a little bit longer because that skin has been kind of not abused but like it hasn't healed properly 
to everything that's in there. It hasn't had proper blood flow. It hasn't healed to that proper baseline of connective tissue and tissue yet. So it's going to take time to get rid of the fibrosis, then time to get rid of the swelling, then more time for the skin to get all nice and taut and pretty. So with chin lipo, people underestimate how much work it takes and neck lipo, how much work it takes. Your body, you can hide. Your body, you could be in a garment. You could be under clothes. You're okay. Your neck and your chin are out there in the world. So if you're going to do chin lipo or if you've done chin lipo and you have all these little lumps and bumps or this discoloration where it's like red and purple at the same time and when you touch it, it goes like white and then red and purple or that red and purple fluctuates from day to day and you've got the hard lumps and bumps and you're not wearing your garment and all of this stuff, expect the minute you start working with me and following these rules, expect it to take another like month and a half to two months to get all of this back to being completely normal and get your final results out of it. Um, whether that be you're starting six months after or a year after, it's going to take time for your body to start actually healing because that whole time when you've had fibrosis, you're not healing. Your body's frozen. Literally, your neck and everything is frozen. Your lymphatic system, even your circulation, it's all compromised because of all of the buildup of scar tissue fibrosis. So that and the swelling. So it's going to take a little extra. Um, but the reason I did this is because a bunch of people had some questions. So fibrosis, the lipofoams, and the post-op cream. Discoloration, the lipofoams, and the post-op cream. Um, with the garments, that was the biggest question that I received recently is the garments for chin and neck lipo. Can you help me find a garment? It's literally any garment. The garment isn't what matters. It's the MRI lipofoams. So... I'm going to wrap this up um, with chin lipo. Make sure you find a surgeon who is well-versed in chin and neck lipo, not just somebody who can throw it in, but somebody who actually specializes in it. Make sure you get proper Amare lipo foams that you can clean and machine wash properly because it's sitting on your neck and face and you don't need a rash. Um, also, you want to make sure that they are, you know, actual lipo foams. They're not memory foam. They're not going to push into you and suffocate you under your garment, but they're going to push the garment away from you. That's the point of our foams. Uh, making sure <clears throat> that you're getting the proper post-op cream for that circulation and the soreness and the bruising and all of that. Uh, water, gallon of water a day. That swallowing action with the water is going to help a lot with the swelling. Um, no salt, as I say all the time. No salt, the end. Um, no coffee the end, and making sure that you are actually looking at it and keeping a check on it. I know a lot of people will just keep their garment on for like four weeks, not ever take it off, not look at it, not check on it, not see what's going on, not realize it's hard. And then at that point, they find me because there's a huge problem and it's all fibrotic and it looks crazy and their incisions look crazy. So that's a little bit about that. If you guys are purchasing the lipo foams and the post-op cream, please watch the videos on those products first so you know how to use them. <clears throat> if you need to set up a virtual with me, 732-841-0142. Call Alex. She will be able to help you in our office schedule with me. And Amari Post Stop Shop for your supplies. The link is in the bio. Guys, thank you so much for watching. I will talk to you soon. Have a good day. Bye.